human beings have been on the planet for how long as hunter gatherers and then you, you you give your you give that analogy in your book about the football field mm -hmm. and the time. Give us, I think that's very helpful. Give us, and and that's where that's where I got that question about ten thousand years. There was um, there was a group of archaeologists from the University of Chicago who did uh, archaeologic digs in uh, Iraq in the mm -hmm. Fertile Crescent, and uh, and they dated a city called Jarmo. As uh, ten thousand years old, right? As as the origin of uh, the first uh, uh, agriculture, organized agriculture. And the reason I know that is that was my uncle. Okay, I that it was Bob and Linda Braidwood from the University of Chicago. And oh, cool! A book uh, called uh, "Digging Beyond the Tigris." I had a chance to go to the Fertile Crescent when I was eleven on a dig, and I didn't because. I didn't want to leave my little league baseball team, and I was, that was really a dumb thing to do. So, so, so should have at least been a girlfriend in there, or something. Oh, yeah. so yeah. So, uh, yeah, give us a sense of maybe using that football analogy, football field analogy, if you want, about the time that you're talking you, about the vast expanse. Of sure, and I, I've got to give credit to my mentor, Lauren Cordain. He's the guy that I think first put this idea into my head. And so if this is an end zone to end zone football field, and if the totality of this is represented with a timeline that's say three million years, like we'll say the emergence of Homo erectus and, and you know, this is three million years ago, this is current day. Uh, if we get up to about here, maybe even about right there, then we're talking about um, the beginning of agriculture for, for most, you know, for some folks on the planet, you know, the earliest states of, of consistent agriculture, they keep pushing back some, some transient grain use, you know, maybe like 100,000 years where when, it, when it's in season, they would collect it and use it. But uh, there's this uh, concept in evolutionary biology, optimum foraging strategy, which, which is basically how much energy do you spend going out and trying to procure something relative to what do you get back? And uh, grains don't win until you start really, you know, intensifying their production and all that. But, but this is, the, uh, from, from this point until this point, all of humanity lived as hunter-gatherers. And our genes were basically hammered and tong forged to live that way. And uh, uh, typically a higher protein, higher fat, uh, kind of transient carbohydrate load, more from uh, fruits, vegetables, some roots and tubers, very low fructose content. Uh, lots of fiber, lots of antioxidants, and again, kind of a transient cyclical pattern, even if we're living in equatorial regions, like everything isn't in season all the time. So we move all the way up to here, and I mean, it it drops off. I, I, uh, there's a movie right now, In Search of the Perfect Human Diet, where my, my mentor, Lauren Cordain, is interviewed, and he's actually out on a football field. And the point at which the, uh, the, agricult or the uh, industrial revolution happens, if this is the end zone, you know, if, if uh, this spot is actually this line right here, he, he gets in and puts a, a thumbnail there. And, you know, it's less than that when you scale this out. That's how long that we've had to adapt to, uh, you know, high fructose corn syrup, uh, uh, vegetable oils, 24-hour uh, shopping networks, you know, changed photo period and all the rest of this stuff. And the amount of change both in sleep, exercise, and food patterns is just unparalleled. We've never seen anything like that before. And, and I think that that's why we see the wheels falling off of our medical situation so powerfully, because we have all of these factors going in that change the way our genes act, the way that our metabolism works, and it's not very healthy for us. It's not working very well. And we're, we're, uh, we're not going to adapt our way out of this. Like, we need to figure out some way of modifying our day-to-day our -day behavior to make this a tenable situation. You know, I mean, I, I don't think any of us wants technology or civilization to go away. The, the, you know, the opposite is not really appealing, but we need to figure out some way to take everything that's good about what we're doing, but then look back and figure out, okay, maybe we can change a few parameters and have a lot better outcomes overall and not bankrupt our, our society in the process, dealing with all the problems that we're generating from living in this uh, genetic evolutionary discordance.